This is AndyTube, and this video I named the zigzag slide and traveling hook systems on a Singer Model 237, like Stella, my Model 237. Now, I'm sure that that is not what Singer called those parts and mechanisms, <laughs> but I haven't seen um, systems like that before on machines that I've done, and that's what I named them. And let me show you here what I am more used to seeing before we get into the mechanisms on Stella. Grab it here. Now this is a model 337 and where Stella was made in Italy about 1970 this model 337 was made in Scotland uh, between 1964 and 1966. So even though it's an older model, chronologically, it does have uh, systems that I am used to seeing. And like Stella, you, you set the stitch length with a, a lever here. The, the um, bob and winder system is on the front instead of the top, but it's still just a lever that moves a spindle. And it has a bob and winding tension disc. And it has a stitch width slide lever on this one is more what I'm used to seeing where all the way to the left is straight stitch or zero width and as you move it to the right of the machine the stitch gets wider and wider up to four and Stella is just the opposite Stella on the left is the widest and on the right is straight stitch and of course there are some differences with this hook system where um, Stella has a vertical oscillating hook over here uh, on the nose end this model 337 remember it's four years earlier has a horizontal oscillating hook that faces the sewer. Faces up and it's right here in the front. But let's take a look at the at the zigzag mechanism up here. And even when 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 I worked on the um, mm, slant needles and the slant omatics like the 403, 401A, and the Rocketeers 500A uh, and 503A, and models 347, 457, the Genie, all those kind of machines. This is what I'm used to seeing. And that is a cam, a pattern cam, Singer sometimes called it. In this case, this machine has one cam and it's a zigzag pattern and it's on a little cam shaft that goes down and has a gear on the bottom of that cam shaft. Yeah that um, mates up with a worm gear. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So on the bottom of this uh, cam shaft is a gear and it mates to the worm gear. Now this one is attached onto the horizontal arm shaft gear to gear. 
So when the hand wheel is turning, those two gears are turning, and therefore the, the cam shaft and the cam, pattern cam, they're also turning, right? All the time, even when the machine is set to straight stitch. They just turn and turn and turn. So, I'll turn this back around here. Sorry for all the camera jostling and stuff. But, what, what all the uh, zigzag machines I've worked on is there's some kind of a follower system here. This little follow arm. And when the machine is set to straight, this arm is disengaged. It doesn't contact the cam. So even though the cam is turning when the machine is in straight, uh, you know, straight stitch mode, it doesn't affect the needle bar driving arm or the needle because the follower is not contacting the cam. And then, let's see, maybe if I can move this down there. I can get both of these in the picture here. Zoom back out a little bit. So when when I move the machine into zigzag mode, you 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 see this cam will will drop in this I mean this pattern arm will drop in and contact the pattern cam. So now when I run the machine and this turns like it always does, now it has contact with this um, uh, follower arm. The other part of this follower uh, mechanism is connected to the needle bar driving arm. And where Stella's was up on top here, if you saw that video I did on the vibrating bracket, there was a rod arm going over to here. This, the needle bar driving arm, is down below the horizontal arm shaft. And you can't, it's, you, you can't hardly see it down there. But let me open up the nose end here. And you will see just the end of it where it attaches to, guess what? A vibrating bracket. And right here is the very end of that needle bar driving arm and where it connects with a kind of a nut and bolt to the vibrating bracket. And this bracket has a spring so when everything's moving the needle bar arm now is going to push the needle bar to the left. And as the follower moves away from the cam, the spring will push the needle bar back to the right. Then the cam will push the needle bar left, and the cam releases it, and the spring in here pushes it back to the right. So that's, that is, um, you know, pretty, pretty common uh, system for Singer. And then, like with the Model 338, um, they had a little flap up on the arm cover, and a, a little bit, uh, different system and you could remove like the zigzag cam and you could put on a different cam like a blind hem cam and use it and by the time they got to the and the same thing with like uh, 348 and uh, into the 400 models by the time they got to the 401 and the 403 they had the top hat cams, top hat cams they were called, where you lift up the door and you just grab the top of the cam and pop it off the cam shaft or pattern selector cam and 
push the new one on boom boom like that like a natural progression so that's that's um, the zigzag system and the more common hook system that I've seen now on the 301 and uh, Coco and Stella the model 99k the vertical shaft was down here on the end you know and the, the hook was all down here but later when they moved into this uh, front facing horizontal hook at first like this in 1966 it was still oscillating but they later went to a rotating hook where the hook just travels around and around and around and around okay so if you've seen some of my 400 videos you've probably seen that type of zigzag and hook system on quite a few machines that I've worked on now let me get this 337 back out of the way that's a, a very interesting machine and I got that I'm going to restore that for my granddaughter but she's only about five so I'm, I'm not in a hurry to do that so we're back with uh, Stella the model 237 now and let me let me take this cover off and then we're going to look at this monkey puzzle zigzag system <laughs> and I, I don't mean that detrimentally I just mean it's real different than than, than what I just showed you right <laughs> so this is what I call the zigzag slide there there is a, a lever here and a slide on the end of that lever and when you set the stitch width it moves that up in the slide moves up in the groove and sets how far or how wide the stitch is going to be so when when I'm in straight stitch over here <coughs> and the machines working below this is a cam and at the bottom of the cam is a gear and it mates with a gear that's cut into the horizontal arm shaft it's not added onto the arm shaft the worm gear on this arm shaft is, is um, cut right into it or, or machined maybe is what you call it right into the big old thick steel uh, arm shaft but it also has a little cam in here that makes it swing left and right do 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 okay and so even though this swings left and right with every stitch all the time just like the cam and the pattern disc on the 337 is always turning this is always moving left right left right but it's not moving the needle bar over here. Let me take this cover off real quick. It doesn't have a thumb screw, so I had to I gotta drive a grab a screwdriver here. And I'll show you this uh, needle bar and vibrating bracket over here. So you remember this is the drive uh, dr needle bar driving arm. Okay. You can, you can see it on this model of Stella and here's the vibrating bracket and let me put it into zigzag but it doesn't move it doesn't spring back and forth because it does not have a spring system on it there's no spring anywhere it's just strictly driven forward and backward by the driving arm so where the other, the driving arm just kind of retreats and the spring helps move the vibrating bracket and needle bar back into, oh that's a little loose, <laughs> better tighten that up, um, back into position. This has no spring, so it's just 
forward and backward and let me put it back into straight stitch and show you see nothing's moving here the, the, the driving arm isn't moving so the vibrating bracket isn't moving so the needle bar is not, not swinging back and forth right the needle bar is just straight up and down straight stitch there we go so even though this uh, bracket and cam is swinging it left and right just the way the 337 cam and pattern discs were always turning the zigzag isn't engaged so nothing's happening okay let me get this back over here okay I got this I got this set up a little better so we can we can see these mechanisms a little better now, now Singer did call this part um, what I call a zigzag slide. They called it the needle bar driving arm slide. Right? This, this uh, piece of steel right there. And underneath it is a cam um, that it's called the needle bar vibrating cam and you can just uh, or can you can you see it I think I showed this in one of my other videos but let's see if I can get some light here you'll see this cam coming around right here it's up at the top and you'll see it poke around the side and then disappear so this cam like the pattern cam on the 337 just rotates around on a camshaft underneath the slide there it comes out now it's going back under it comes up you can just barely I, I'm, I can't see how well this is showing up darn it See if I can get down here and zoom in a little better. I need a lighting expert, don't I? <laughs> right there is the top of that cam. Now this is a metal cam. Okay, it's a big metal cam that 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 um, has a pattern, an elliptical pattern is. is like the pattern disc on the metal cam and the cam goes all the way down has a gear on it and that mates with that gear that's that's machined into the arm shaft so if I turn this you're gonna see that pattern cam move to the right and disappear as it's going around see it coming up there Now it's going to go under the slide, then it's going to pop up on the left end of the slide, come around over the top, and disappear again. Boy, I hope that shows up. Okay, so the the both of these um, parts they sit on top of kind of an X-shaped um, piece comes like this and then it goes in narrow and then it comes back out wide at the top and that's called a positioning plate so it is called the the needle bar uh, vibrating and gear positioning plate so it basically holds all of that and the camshaft and the gear on the bottom in the perfect place to mate that gear up with the gear on the uh, horizontal arm shaft. Where the 337 when it, when, and the others, when they have a cam stack here, it's kind of screwed right into the base of the machine this has this positioning plate that holds it 
with the slide on top and the and the the mm, cam the pattern cam sandwich between and it holds that in that position and if you looked around on your 237 if you had one or, I mean if you have one and you see this hole over here on, on the back side and, and you look in there you'll see a, a set screw that set screw is to hold this um, Mm, hinge stud that holds those three pieces together up here on the top there's a hinge stud goes right goes through the through that um, cam and down through the the cam shaft and it holds all that together and if they bind you loosen this uh, set screw and you turn the uh, the stud up here the hinge stud which is elliptical and you move it closer or farther the two gears from each other and my um, retired singer friend said he never had to make that adjustment in his lifetime <laughs> so there you go <laughs> just a word to the wise <laughs> He thought maybe if the machine had been dropped or something, that that might be some reason that the, the two gears got pushed closer together, and so they were binding as they turned. And it was like, yeah, I could see that happening, you know. And then we'd have to uh, we'd have to go in and and change that. Okay, so let's talk about some others of these parts. And I'm going to try and take some of these parts off, uh, too. But I wanted to kind of just, just talk about them. So we, we've talked about all these parts and the driving arm. But there's all these uh, brackets and levers here that, that operate as part of this system. And there's kind of this crank over here on this end. So... Let's talk about what all of these are and what these these guys do, okay? All right. So this is the fingertip control. You can barely see my fingers down. Yeah, let me see. This is called the fingertip control, and that's basically how you move these mechanisms from straight stitch on the right and you start moving them left to go into a zigzag mode. Why am I stuck over here? Poor Stella, I think I beat her up so bad and put her up on blocks and stuff. There we go. Putting her on that block was blocking something on the bottom from moving. I'm used to the slants that can just sit right on a desk and don't have to be in a in anything. Let's try this. Can I do this? Nope. I'm still doing something wrong. How about if I put it over here on the nose? There. Now I can move everything. Okay. So, as I as I move the fingertip control Ah, I was still zoomed in. I wonder. As I move this fingertip tip control to the left you'll see this arm starts sliding up in the slide and that's how you you start creating the zigzag okay so when you're in straight and everything is turning you're you're like at the bottom of the pivot point and it and nothing there's a the little slide on the end of this lever right here where the lever goes into the slide there's a little block slide that slides in there and it's on a swivel right here so it just that little block swivels with the big slide back and forth and nothing over here moves the needle bar nothing of this mechanism moves 
but as we start going into zigzag and the slide comes up it's now in the arc and when you turn it's swiveling up with this slide and that lever which comes over here is starting to move this mechanism left and right see that and what's here on this uh, crank arm is the needle bar driving arm which is going up front here to the vibrating bracket so that's where you start getting your needle bar swinging left and right because this lever let me put it back down a straight stitch so we can see the lever runs from here over to here and it's it's called a uh, the needle bar driving arm connecting lever so it connects the movement from the slide over to this crank see the swivel point here over to this crank to to connect to to create the motion so when you're down in straight stitch there is no motion of this lever but as soon as you get up there's zigzag one as soon as you get up there you're up in this arc of the swing now and it, you're starting to get some movement so you're going to get a narrow zigzag stitch if you move up into like three you move halfway up this slide here so you you have a wider arc now right so that's going to move this mm, connecting lever more left and right which is going to push the driving arm left and right even farther and if you go over to zigzag four you're up up at the top of this arc so where where this uh, slide now is moving left and right you're way up at the top of that arc so you're going to get the most movement of the needle bar driving arm and this crank that it's all connected to okay so this this fingertip uh, control is just attached right here is the screw and it's just on this bracket that is anchored back here with a swivel screw so when you move it that this bracket right there just moves with with the fingertip control right move it right move it left okay then now there's an arm or well uh, I don't know if I should call it an arm let's call this a bracket also because it's it's a fasten this is a regulating bracket so when you're moving the fingertip control you're really moving this regulating bracket which regulates how far up into the slide the connecting lever goes so that's the purpose of this see it regulate we'll say I'll regulate it to width two three four and then back to zero width so interesting enough there is another slide <laughs> under this mm, regulating lever bracket and it slides along the connecting needle bar connecting lever slide 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 so you get a slide there you got a slide here okay so it's it's starting to make sense right take your fingertip control and put it into zigzag moves this connecting lever up into the arc of this slide which is always moving left and right left and right because it's on a cam a pattern cam 
on a shaft that goes down and is powered off the horizontal arm. So it's always moving. And once you use this fingertip and the regulating bracket moves the connecting bracket up into that arc of movement, you start getting movement of the crank and therefore the needle bar driving arm and therefore the needle starts swinging left and right. And it doesn't spring back because this driving arm and the crank and these slides pull it back. It pulls it to the right, it pushes it to the left, then it pulls it back. There's no spring anywhere on this. Okay. So that's what the that's why I said kind of a monkey puzzle thing here. You know, as you've got this anchoring bracket for the fingertip control, you've got the connecting bracket between the slide and the crank over here, and then you've got the regulating bracket with a slide that regulates how far that bracket moves up into the into the needle bar driving arm slide. Whew. Okay. And then, last but not least, this is the needle position. And it's just uh, left, center, right. So that just moves by going left, moves the needle bar left, pulls all this to the left, putting it in the center for center stitching or pushing it to the right. Just moves the needle bar, driving arm, and the slide, and the connecting bracket. It just moves them a little left, center, or right. That's all that does. It's just part of that um, hinge stud in here. Okay. And this fingertip control for that is just screwed into that uh, positioning bracket under here that's holding the gear and holding the slide. Okay. Whew. So, now you see maybe you can understand. I don't know how to talk about it. So, I called it the zigzag slide. I mean, right? That turns out that that's not a bad way to call it or name it. Let's see, let me put it back into zigzag and give you that front view maybe of all this stuff moving. Oops, other hand. You'll see all this connecting brackets move and then the driving arm move and it swings the vibrating or swinging bracket. I think in the beginning Singer called it swing needle. They call it this vibrating bracket now. But that's how the zigzag motion is made and how it's regulated and controlled. Ta-da! Now, next we're going to talk about... So I'm being a little sneaky here and I'm inserting a uh, video I made after the complete video of this because I forgot to take off some of the parts. <laughs> so I'm going to do that now and then I'll go back to the uh, original filming. The um, To get some of these off here, uh, I start with the little hinge or swivel up here and I use swivel and hinge um, the same. Singer always calls it a hinge, a hinge stud or a hinge screw and I have a tendency to call it a swivel so don't get confused if I do that but there's a set screw up here that holds the the driving arm in and if you loosen that you can uh, See, let me move this over a little. You can pull out this driving arm and just uh, swivel it, it or hinge it. 
up here on the vibrating bracket so you can get that out of your way right away to give you a little bit more um, room to work in here and then there is a hinge screw back back here that um, on this uh, bracket or lever from the fingertip control in the front and uh, these are all lefty Lucy all of these um, screws make sure there's not a set screw back there I thought this would just come out but it's Kind of struggling to do that. Hmm. Maybe I'll maybe I'll uh, let me keep let me keep trying here. It just seems to get stiffer as I try to loosen it, which is a little unusual. I hate to force anything, but Would be the first time I broke something. Yeah, I think it's putting too much stress on all this. So I think I'm going to take this end of the connecting bracket off. And I see it's got a set screw on the end here that holds this um, hinge. So this would be a hinge stud. That's the difference between a hinge screw and a hinge stud uh, a hinge stud just goes into the hole and then has one or two set screws to hold it in place and a hinge screw actually like like up here on the bobbin winder uh, lever it actually screws in to the hole so this is going to be a stud since I see this so there see it's going to want to come right up now right yeah it's still got all this stuff in it I'm gonna try this big one one more time I may have to take off the fingertip bracket here might be Ooh, boy, that's just a lot of, yeah. That's just a lot of pressure here. So let me try this. This appears, oh, I got to change tips here. It looks like the regulating bracket comes underneath the fingertip control bracket, and they're screwed together there. So, let's see if I can get a different uh, different tip in there and, and loosen that. We'll get it figured out here. Yep, there's no um, set screw or anything there. Just a lefty Lucy screw. That's loose. Let's see if this will come up yet. Oh, because this goes underneath that, doesn't it? Now let's try that back screw again and see if it can come up now without any stress on the fingertip control. Oh, look at that. Nice and easy. Famous last words. Look, it's still, boy, that's still really tight. Let me put it back in a little bit and see if I can. We 
release a little tension on this. I think if I had to loosen this fingertip control first, that might have been the way to go. Sorry, I'm just not familiar with this system. So we're learning together, right? <laughs> See, I pulled up that. I pulled up that hinge stat too. Well, that's going to want to come out. We can drop that down. Can't push it up and out. Can't lift it off. There. Whee! There's the fingertip control. See that angle of the bracket sits on top of this whole like hinge lever, but the regulating bracket goes underneath it. So now that I've got that off, you can see this bracket. Is it? Oh, that's oh, that's all in one. I thought that was a two two pieces together, but it's all in one. But look, the little slide slipped off here. So this is the slide that is uh, controlled by the regulating bracket. It just sits in a, in a hole. It's got like a little tension friction washer. And you can see the, you can see the cut out there. The groove that sits right on the con the connecting bracket and just slides. So it goes. Get that up there on top again. Goes like that. And the other thing that popped out was this is the slide underneath the connecting bracket that slides along in this groove. Whoop. Okay, let me let me get it let me get it apart here and we can look at the parts better. So now I can take this Big one off here in the back. Look at that, no tension, smooth as butter. So I think I take off the fingertip control from the front and then this uh, hinge screw and see it's a hinge screw because it has threads, not a stud. A stud would be smooth here. And this bigger part under the head that doesn't have threads that's the hinge part that this bracket hinges on. So here's what it looks like under underneath. So the bracket sits up on that smooth part so that it can just hinge or swivel. So on these type of hinge screws you screw the screw in all the way because there is a uh, space here with no threads to hinge on. All right. Now we've got our connecting. We've got our connecting bracket here, and this should now come out easily. Oh yeah, it's a stud, and I've already loosened the set screw, so it should just lift right out. See, and there's the hinge stud. See, it's just smooth all the way. It's just a smooth cylinder. So when it's in there, it's held in place by the set screw, and then it can swivel or hinge. Okay. And then where did my slide, I think, did it fall through the bottom here? Yeah. This is the slide that goes on the regulating arm.
Got that backwards. You can see the slide marks right here. See the wear pattern? You see the wear pattern on this? So it just sits right here and just slides. Okay, and this goes on top of it. This is the this is the regulating bracket. Come on, slide. Here we go. So it's sitting in there like this. Fingertip control. See these parts aren't screwed together here. It's just the slide held in place by the pressure of that bracket. And then this uh, connecting bracket has its own slide in here that's just held in place by pressure so that it can it can hinge also and when the regulating bracket pushes it up or pulls it back it just slides along right in here so those are the pieces for that and then this um, call it a crank okay don't worry about that what I was hoping to see besides showing you the parts I was hoping to be able to see more in here and uh, be, because when I when I emailed my retired singer guy because I, I said in the service guide, it says do not um, remove the connection of the worm gear to the um, slide gear that goes through here and goes through the cam up there. It says do not do that. And I said, you know, what do you think of that? And he says, yeah, if somebody brought this into the shop he worked in in Canada and it had a problem like that, they would replace the machine or give the customer a loaner machine and they would send this machine, you know, like back to the factory. Phew. And I don't think they sent it back to Italy. I think they sent it to New Jersey was what he remembered. But it, 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 they were told don't mess with it. So I'm going to take that to heed and I'm not going to mess with it. But I was hoping to be able to show some... Uh, let's see if I get a light around here. Maybe put this end up for a better angle. I was hoping that we could peek in there and at least see those gears so the cleaning did pretty good and I got plenty of grease on it in there mm -hmm. I wonder if I can uh, crop and put a picture of from the parts manual here Well, hopefully the, the uh, blow-ups of the diagram and the close-up picture I was able to take gives you a better idea of these parts and how they go together and what they look like down here when they are together. Okay, so I'm going to reassemble this now if I can, if I can remember uh, how, how it goes together. <laughs> and... We'll, we'll get this back together. Okay, so, hmm.
I will put the connecting bracket with the slide back in here and yep, there we go okay let's turn that and if we move it up here have I got the full arc yeah okay that looks pretty good I'm not going to tighten that up yet just in case and then uh, this is the part that that fooled me the regulator and the fingertip control kind of anchor I thought this was two pieces kind of stacked together but it's all one <laughs> convoluted piece here so see I'm thinking I want to put the fingertip control in there maybe first and I stick it through from the inside is that how I got it out and I pull it out whoa uh oh one of my most valuable tools my one dollar telescoping magnet pen hmm. okay let's try this again now see if I can do it without fumbling around so bad there we go ta-da okay let's just set that in there temporary and I get this kind of back down here and that slide back here this is going to go under and that's going to sit right in there and I got to put the regulator slide onto the connecting bracket Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'll put this big um, hinge screw in here first so it'll support that. I, I just I'm trying not to block your view of everything. I mean, after even one video, I'm sure you're sick of looking at my hands, right? Now we're talking. So a hinge screw, or for that matter, a hinge stud goes all the way in but a hinge screw you you tighten it completely <clears throat> okay I think I got my slide up here a little there we go yeah so I'll take that little screw that holds the fingertip control and we'll see about putting that back in here. So that's a good tip to remember is that this fingertip control goes in first from the inside out make sure my slide is are all sitting flat yay yeah. very good okay 
Let me just tighten that guy up a little bit, make sure I got him in all the way. There we go. Okay. And then making sure everything is flat and proper and that this connecting bracket and the hinge stud are all the way in. I will tighten up the set screw on that hinge stud. Let's run it in by fingertip here and then I'll tighten it with my little mini ratchet from Chapman. There we go. Make sure that that's nice and tight. Okay. Right. Now I have to put my uh, vibrating bracket or needle bar driving arm back in here into this swivel stud and tighten the set screw but this um, driving bar to the vibrating bracket that's what's used to center the needle in the needle plate so anytime that you've uh, pulled that out when you put it back in you have to get the you have to get it back into the center of the needle plate or everything is going to be off so let me raise up the needle here and put a needle I mean the needle bar and put a needle back in okay yep yep now yeah cuz see I'm off let me get down here It's definitely not in the center. If you can see that. See the needles clear over resting against the left side or the right right side of the opening. And then you, you move that needle bar driving arm or vibrating bracket driving arm right back and forth so I've got to find the center of that needle plate with the needle and then tighten up that uh, screw up on the top so I'm just going to do it like that get it right in the center I'll go up top and tighten that set screw And then I'll show you back up on top the screw I'm talking about. I'm, you, you probably, i sure I'm in the center here. I'm sure you remember it, but just to be double sure, I don't want you to have a question. Let me. Oops. In the center. Yep. Mm hmm oh that's why I messed up see this left center right it was about halfway over to right when I centered the needle no 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 this has to be set to center to center the needle so I'm gonna have to Loosen my set screw up here on the driving arm to get that free again. It's a common mistake. 
so don't fall for that <laughs> then I want to lower my needle and reposition it into the center again and by by the way I should have told you this left center right you're in the center and on your width you're in straight stitch no no zigzag setting so all the way to the right and to the center on this machine and then you can move this bar if you want or you can just come down here like I do and just hold the needle bar right there and center it and then we'll tighten that set screw up on the top and we should be good to go now center all right there we go so no wonder my needle was hitting part of the shuttle or the the hook housing was because I really didn't center it the first time because I, I had this partially oh it wasn't in the center let me put it that way okay and then this is the this is the set screw right right here on the swivel or the set yeah set set screw on the hinge for the driving arm the tight set so now I've, I've sh shown you the uh, method to remove some of those parts um, I don't think you really ever have to do that you know but um, if you ever do or you want to take some of those to get down in there and clean this area better which is something I would probably do during a restoration um, you, you see how to do that now you know yep smooth as silk let's go over to some zigzag here and see how it's going yep okay so ladies and gentlemen we now return you to your regular scheduled program of the zigzag slide and the traveling hook on a Singer Model 237. We're going to learn about the traveling hook. Okay, uh, the traveling hook of a Singer Model 237. So even though I'm going to talk about the hook, which is way down here on the left, I got to start up here because this up here is what starts the hook on its travels. And when I'm saying travel, I'm talking about this hook and the whole horizontal shaft underneath moves left and right. The hook travels left and right. And it does it in sync with the vibrating bracket. Whew. Never, never, ever have I seen that. So, let's see. Put it, put it over here. Put it into some zigzag. Is this going to work? Or have I got something blocked underneath again? Okay, that might work. We'll put it back in the center. Okay. So, be besides this system moving the vibrating slide the connecting bracket needle bar driving arm according to how you regulate it it's kind of anchored over here and I'm going to call this the upper crank and you see that it, it moves left and right when you're in zigzag mode when you're in straight stitch mode it doesn't move right none of this but when you put it into oh boy what have I done here when you put it into zigzag um, it, it won't move 
<laughs> they probably bent, bent something terribly on this. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Poor Stella. You know, I've never even uh, sewn on this. I hope I hope Stella works when I'm all finished with this. Okay, so when it's in straight, this crank doesn't move. None of the mechanisms. Only the cam, pattern cam, and the slide goes left and right. Just like the other machine I showed you, the cam and the pattern disc always turning, turning. When we get up into the zigzag mode, all of it starts moving. And you see even the crank, right? So it's over here, and it swivels left and right, left and right. Driving the arm to drive the vibrating bracket, <coughs> and swing the needle. So what's interesting here is when I looked at this piece of silver metal in the center, I thought it must be a swivel screw or a swivel stud. And that's when, when all this started cranking left and right. I figure it's a swivel. You know, it's swiveling here. But you know what? Um, it does and it doesn't because this silver piece in the center let me draw a line on it here let me bisect it with this red sharpie I looked for a black sharpie I couldn't find one so hopefully you can see the red but as it swivels you'll see it's moving right with the crank so whatever this silver piece is that the crank is clamped onto it swivels right with the crank when the crank moves and when the crank doesn't move it doesn't move either okay so what is this what 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 is the function of that and how does this affect the traveling hook and it turns out that this silver piece inside the clamp is an upright arm shaft Woo. so that is the end of an arm shaft that's sitting upright in the machine now that's making sense to me when I peeked in here you're not going to be able to see it very good unless you have one of these machines in front of you but this shaft there's like a collar built into the casting it's, ah okay there's a bushing or a bearing here and the shaft goes down through it and i can just barely see it headed down so where like the fork feed connection goes down to work the the feed and so forth there's an upright arm shaft solid steel going straight down all right so let's go to the bottom and look into this you get this thing turned turned over here uh sorry stella let's get stella turned over here <laughs> and we'll see where's the other end of that shaft okay so this is kind of precarious because I have Stella leaning on a wood block on one side because I don't want to damage her top driving arm and so forth. But down here on the bottom, where's my pointer? I put a red slash mark on the bottom of that upright arm shaft. See it right there? And you see that it's in a clamp and from that clamp is hmm, that clamp is is part of that clamp is in the lower crank so the upper crank was moving the needle bar driving arm back and forth this lower crank has a slide 
and it sits right in here between these two bushings. Mm. You see the slide right in there? And when the crank at the top moves and that arm moves, this lower crank moves back and forth. And it has a slide because it sits right on the horizontal oscillating hook shaft. So here is the hook housing right here and here's the hook on the end of it. This is the horizontal hook shaft. And it oscillates from a fork and another slide block that this is powered by that forked feed connection. And you notice maybe how wide this slide is. It's about twice as wide as normal. And that's because when this upright arm and the upper crank and lower crank and slide go left and right, it's moving this whole hook shaft left and right from end to end, from the hook to the slide in the fork connection here. So, let me reach over the machine. I'm going to put the machine back into zigzag mode, I hope. Oh, I don't think it'll do it because I got it sitting on a block up there. Hang on. Okay. Sorry, it's so awkward. So I put it in zigzag. I'm going to turn the, you know, the shaft or the hand wheel. But you're going to see this a crank going left and right. Um, synchronized with the top crank on the other end of this arm shaft that's moving the needle bar driving arm it's going to move all these mechanisms left and right. And it moved it to the right. You see that? And it moved the slide. It moved the slide over to the right here, right past the fork. And as I turn, it's going to crank it all back left and that slide's going to move to the other side of the fork. And the slide on the crank that's between these two bushings is just going to push the bar, the horizontal arm shaft, to the left. There it goes left. Comes back, crank to the right, crank to the left, crank to the right, crank to the left. Can you get any closer here? There, you can see it better. So, I know in one of the videos before, when I looked at this machine, I said, wow, look at this big old uh, bushing and everything here going into this housing. And the whole hook shaft was going in and out of there. And that's why. It's a traveling hook. It follows the needle. So when the needle swings left, the hook moves left. When the needle swings back to the right, the hook moves back to the right. And now if you look at this um, housing for the hook right here, it's attached to this um, hook shaft so you're going to see the whole housing move. Right, right, left, right, left, right. Whew. So, I can kind of turn this up now. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. So I'm, let me open up this 
uh, cover here so you can see I have the the actual hook or shuttle pulled out maybe I can slip it back in real quick so that you can see it there now then, then that's held in place by the cover, right? But I want to leave that open. And because I, what I want to show here is how this is going to move towards the camera and away from the camera as the needle uh, swings in the zigzag mode. So as the needle bar swings what would be left as you face the machine, to make the left side of the zigzag, the hook is going to come out and meet it. It just perfectly sync in sync. Let's see if I can do this now. There, the needle's coming down, swinging towards us. Now it's swinging away, and the hook retracts. Then the needle's going to swing toward us, and the hook's going to move out of the housing to meet it, and swing back. It's just too weird. So, that's why I called it the traveling hook. Let's see if we can get a look at it from here, maybe. We can get a better... view down maybe get some more light over here hmm. yeah so you should you should see the hook will be coming out and back which from the front of the machine over here would be left right left right left right right in sync with the needle bar driving arm and the vibrating bracket and therefore the actual needle bar. Swing out, the hook came out. Swing to the left, the hook retracts in. I don't know, are we able to see that hook move in and out as much as I hoped? Yeah, you can see the whole the whole you can see it moving here. See it? Goes back. Then it's going to come out. Move forward. That's left. Back to the right. Oh, the hook came out. <laughs> it's okay. But you see the housing where the shuttle or hook sits is going left and right in sync with the needle. The traveling hook. Whee! Okay, so, um, first time I've ever seen that. And the feed dog does not move left to right. It just moves front to back if you're in normal mode. It, it pulls the fabric, you know, through under the needle for whatever stitch length you've got it set for. Or if I put it up in reverse, it's going to uh, push the fabric from the back up and towards you for whatever length I have it set for. But the hook is going to come in and out with the needle back and forth and time it. That is quite a system. So I don't know. Um, you know, it, it maybe it just seems strange to me because I've never seen it before. Maybe that's uh, Italian design at work. I, <laughs> I really don't, I don't know what to say. You know, if, if people bought this and used this and looked at it and their repairmen, it, would, it makes perfect sense, right? It's like, yeah, well, what's the problem? This slides, this regulates how much the arc is for the width. Straight stitch is over here. 
what's the big deal right got a cam under there moves the slide back and forth got the connecting bracket the driving arm and the vibrating bracket moving the needle back and forth then and an economy of power and motion it's got a upright arm shaft over here that goes down and it has a, a crank on the bottom that with a slide that moves the hook shaft left and right just like the needle bar driving arm so it's brilliant maybe they would look at a 337 from Scotland and say what the what the heck is this piece of plastic cam up here and this cam stack and the hooks not moving how does how does the needle pick up you know the the go down in there and how does the hook grab the needle thread and wrap it around the bottom thread if the hook doesn't move left and right not only that the hook was in the front right? <laughs> okay all right I think I'll wrap it up there best I can do on the zigzag slide and traveling hook of a Singer model 237 Ta -da -da. open to comments on that if you've seen this before or if you've seen other models that have that system I I'd like to know about it because uh, I don't know of any but thanks for tuning in to Andy Tube and I hope you will come back again and watch another video when you have time and in the meantime take care of yourself okay mm -hmm.